All right, we got the star of the video right here, guys. Hey guys, Lima here. I'm in the Indianapolis airport, as you can see, and I'm on the way to Witter Coin. So, welcome to the vlog. What is up? We made it to Wittercoin. We are here. Jacob needs a whole tour. We're here at this guy. And who, who are you? I'm Cyrus. Nice to meet everyone. Nice to meet you. I'm Luke. Do you still have that? Oh. Sunday's tour out to California's gold country was definitely a highlight of Wittercoin this year. The tour guide in Coloma had a lot of great information to share about the Native American population there, as well as the population of gold miners and the gold history in the area. This photo right here shows a replica, a one-to-one -one copy of the original Sutter's Mill, and this picture shows where the original Sutter's Mill was, where James Marshall first discovered gold, just by pure coincidence. It was really, really cool to stand here and know that a lot of the gold came from this area, and even I have a California gold token that likely contains gold from this area. Right after that, we got to do some panning of our own. It was a little bit silly because all we were able to find was flakes, but I did find some and it was a fun experience nonetheless. After that, we took a tour of the Gold Bug Mine, a hard rock mine. They didn't pan for gold at this location. Instead, they blasted the rock out, crushed it, and then did some chemistry in order to take the gold out of the rock. drive home from this field trip was absolutely gorgeous coming over the bay. This was a rather fun drive for me because we got to drive over the Bay Bridge which has its own commemorative half dollar and here's a photo of the Port of San Francisco which is also on that half dollar. Fisherman. All right, so I'm in down. Wait. Oh. Where am I? <laughs> you're at Fisherman's Wharf, but why don't you wait until you're up with the sign to do it? All right. I'm at the Fisherman's Wharf. It's downtime, as you can see. And today we went to Coloma, we went to Gold Country, we went to the uh, uh, gold mine, a plaster, uh, wait, no, a hard rock gold mine. It's pretty cool. So tomorrow morning's the first day of class. I'll make sure to get some great photos, great videos. If I don't, it's because it. <laughs> <laughs> So tomorrow is the first day of Witter Coin class. I'll try to get some videos, I'll try to get some photos, and I'll share a little bit about what that is. Remember to also mention your age, your age and where your hometown, where you're from. I'm Luke Jackson, I'm 17, I'm from Indianapolis. Uh, I've been into coins for about seven years, but since I was like five, I've been looking at like at big bank coins and seeing how old they were. Uh, I'm mostly into classic commemoratives now, and I'm trying to build a name. What's that called? A Katongan cross? Yeah, it's even the same. Yeah, it's even the same. Just be careful. It looks like chrome is on this device. 
the larger ones, four dollars. Uh, Ginormous. Kind of weird though. Yeah. She's a pre like yeah. yeah. A couple hundred bucks on up. So that's not bad. I mean, it's not bad. <laughs> Most of the stuff is not bad. Yeah. I think it's weird. when you're done, Harry. I think it's weird that the front doesn't seem yeah, lined up with the back. You notice that? Yeah, I think that was common. They just look like coins. They didn't have the same quality measures. Do you want a picture with the gap stone, Josh? What? At the end of class and after everybody had dinner, we would all usually meet in the ballroom and sometimes we'd play chess, sometimes we'd trade coins, and it was just a great time to make friends and bond over something that we were all interested in. And here are some photos just from the day out in San Francisco. In the beginner class, we did lots of grading practice, and here are some of the really cool coins that I saw while I was practicing. The vintage US type coins were often my favorite coins to see while I was practicing grading. Finally, looking at some of these coins in hand that I've always seen pictures of. Especially getting to see some of the pre-33 gold type coins was super awesome. This is valuable stuff that obviously I don't get an opportunity to see every day. Oh man. Make sure you're writing down your own opinions of the grades, not your neighbors. You might be right, they might be wrong. Oh, I did it wrong. They only have a one in 30 shot. 
y'all get it right, guys. Morgan Wallace. Is it full band? Oh shoot, it's not. Beautiful. Even though it wasn't full bands, this was definitely one of the most beautiful dimes I've ever seen. It's just gorgeous. And next up are some photos from our tour to the San Francisco Mint. This tour was super, super cool because the San Francisco Mint is not open to public tours and we weren't allowed to have our phones in there. We had to get photos especially taken. First up is the room where we saw them polishing planchets for new coins. We saw planchets for the innovation dollars as well as the Peace and Morgan dollars. Next up, we moved to the room where they polish the dyes. This one was super cool because we actually got to hold some of the reverse proof Morgan dollar dies before they were used. So this was super special to see. And next up, probably the coolest room of all, the pressing room. Here's a picture of a mint worker inspecting some coins coming right off the dies. Here's a group of us watching one of the mint workers actually operating the press and making coins. It was super cool to see the coins slide right off the dies, brand new. Finally, we got to see the packaging room where they put together the sets that us collectors so dearly love. And back to class we go. What you got? Mind your business. Isn't that just really cool? Unfortunately, I can't go in depth of the history of this coin in this video, but being able to hold a Fugio scent in my hand was one of the coolest things I got to do while practicing grading. It's almost 10 p.m. We're, we're setting up a live auction. Every lot starting at $1. And we're all in the room right now. We're gonna have fun. Can you read out what the coin is as you auction it? Yes, I'm gonna make a very like brief description. How many coins on the big box? The 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 it's okay. Civil war token. Civil war token. Yo, Josh, can I see your sheet? Which one is mine? Next up on the agenda was pizza night at the Witter Coin Coin Shop. In these pictures, I'm selling some stuff to the crew, and up next we have an interview with some of the crew. All right, I'm here with Ben Brody and Brendan O'Shea. And we're, Brendan O'Shea. We work uh, we work for Winter Coin in San Francisco. All right, so tell me what's what's it like this week with the students here? Oh, it's hectic. We've got forty young numismatists out in San Francisco, and uh, they're all here learning about coins. Uh, hey. We got Kurt Scammer. I mean Gammer up there. <laughs> um, but yeah, we got forty young numismatists. They're out here learning about coins. 
I mean, have you been enjoying the classes? You feel like you learn a lot? I think it's really cool. Yeah, I've been learning. Okay, lots cool. of lots of like little facts too that are like good to know about grading in the future, mm -hmm. and also just collecting in general. Yeah, yeah. So that's one thing you'll get a lot from uh, the universities. You learn, you become a better grader. You learn more about coin dealing and ethics in the coin hobby. Yeah. Um, and you're gonna meet a lot of friends. That's the biggest. I would say that's the biggest part of the whole thing. I mean, yeah, it's all about networking, right? That's 100%. that's the biggest thing. You can be the best coin dealer, but if you don't have any friends, I mean, how are you gonna be a coin dealer? Yeah, right. Right. So how did you How did you get into coin dealing? Um. So I grew up collecting like foreign coins just when I was really young, right. and then in high school, my freshman year of high school, I met a mentor who. Um, and showed me his collection and I was hooked. He had uh, some incredible coins, like finest known sets, all CAC, that kind of stuff. And he asked me to do a lot of his personal buying for him. So I was buying some pretty big coins in high school and then I was buying a coin from this shop in San Francisco when I was a senior in high school. And then Seth offered me an internship. So uh, after my senior year of high school, I drove out to San Francisco and spent a month in San Francisco, learning about coins. And then I've been coming to San Francisco for the past five years, graduated college, and I started full-time in September. Nice. What about you? So, good buddies and friends. Uh, a couple mentors back in Scottsdale, so I worked at the shop part-time called Scottsdale Coin. And then my grandma, and also I was doing coin roll hunting in yeah, uh, different areas, too. so that pretty much got me started. And then I met Seth, yeah. He offered me a job out here, I jumped on it. I was like, might as well. Do you want to talk about how you got into coin dealing? Yeah, sure, I can. So I met Seth Chandler on Instagram probably about 2019, 2020, <laughs> through the pandemic. And um, came out during the first Winter Coin U 2021. It was an absolute blast full of learning professors, professional numismatists, just great, great people in the industry. And that catapulted me into a network oh of, uh, you know, interstate traveling, dealing, wheeling and dealing, learning about the beauty of this uh, multifaceted industry. Uh, I always had a really deep passion for coins. I've been, you know, collecting. I love history. I've been collecting since I was six years old and uh, returned again in 2022 and uh, began a uh, internship at PCGS, uh, worked with some other coin shops across the country, uh, interned at Witter Coin, which was one of my first, uh, you know, stepping stones in, into my professional career in numismatics. Uh, interned at PCGS, like I said, uh, later interned at Heritage Auctions, which was, was just a great opportunity. And uh, I wouldn't, it wouldn't have been possible without Winter Coin U. So it's so great to see the, the new generation out here, uh, wheeling and dealing and hustling, and uh, so happy to share my story. And so happy to be here. Winter Coin U 2024, folks. Let's go, Thank inspirational. You. That's All right, that was pretty good. I have one final question. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite numismatics related vocab word? And what does it mean word. and why is it your favorite? Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> what do you think mine is? Toner. <laughs> toner. I love toners. <laughs> toner something else. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I like toners. Um, okay. I also like full head. You know what it reminds me of? Oh, I like that. What's it remind you of? Money. There's a lot of money to be made on full head stand limited quarters out there, folks. Full head, I like that. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. What about you? Mm. Oh, I can name a few. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Let's go with luster. I like luster. Oh, yeah. I think I think mine's nice seniorage. Luck. It's like the profit. That seniorage? The, seniorage. It's the profit that the government makes when printing and minting currency. Really? So, like, the, the amount of, like, the cost it takes to print it and then how much they're actually making. Gotcha. So, the difference between that. Hmm. That's interesting. I've not heard that one. Say the, say the term again? Seniorage. Seniorage. Okay. Seniorage. All right. That's Good deal. That's all the pennies you made out of zinc now, not copper anymore, right? There's too much cost yeah. secured in those. That's exactly why they, they changed like, the composition. Of the Government's a business. they got to make money. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know? Oh, absolutely. It's not <laughs> <Yeah>. a charity. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Ain't free handouts. No. Thanks it's for your business. time. Yeah, course, thanks, Luke. Course. Thank you. All right, we got the star of the video right here, guys. It's a Mintage 645. So 1915S slug from the Panama Pacific Exposition. Or not, octagonal. Yes, that's crazy. Cool. Where'd y'all get these? Where did we get these? <laughs> Where'd you get them is the question. It was this really old lady that came in. She didn't know what she had, so we bought it all for, for face I value. actually have heard stories of that happening. 
We did not do that. Is this from like a museum? Like, no, some of these are client coins. Um, like some of this stuff's like... Look at that. Look at the shirts. shirts the Trump shirts. Why shirt, bro? This is Vance. His vice president pick. I got other colors. You, you guys are getting, these you, you guys are getting political sold, talk in my like YouTube video. How much you make on them? Like, six bucks a shirt. But, but hear me out, hear me out. It takes no work. Like, I literally wake up in the morning, I see the orders, I press a button. A $3 piece? They're shipped out. It's like automated, so it's good. It takes like no work. Mm -hmm. Just click a button. Is, have any questions about these coins rather than Trump bands? Can I have one for free? No. Okay. <laughs> That's a terrible question. Yeah. You guys only have a couple of minutes. This collection is definitely one of the most phenomenal collections I've ever had my hands on. So thank you so much to the Witter Coin crew for letting me get a chance to take a look at these awesome coins. Okay, I'm um, Joe Pelago, and uh, what's the question? What do I like about working here? Uh, I love working at America's Coin Shop. I love the people, and uh, not just my colleagues I work with, but the people we get to work with buy collections from. Um, it's really cool. I love helping people. Cool. And what's your favorite numismatic book at work? My favorite? I see there's so many. I think the first one that just organically comes to my mind is like Luster. Luster. I don't know, you know? Like, I got Luster from she, Brandon. Yeah, you, really? Yeah. Because man, that Luster pop, dude, it's a big deal, you know? Cool. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Very difficult to get with those vintage loops. And, you know, they, they have rarity numbers, but, you know, on a lot of them, I know there's a horde. Was he took mint state dyes, polished them up, and struck proofs from mint state dyes. And that's the only delivery of those, and those are mint state dyes, polished up as proofs. That, that coin came out of a proof holder. So, how many have are actually known? Six. Okay. So. You know, it's <laughs> the other 19 are, <laughs> are still mysteriously. Okay, so did you want to say a couple words? Yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Luke. Okay, here we are. Um, well, when I think about this community, I think about a community of giving back and Wittercoin you and the people at Wittercoin are just the, they're the top of that, giving back to the community. So thank you to them. Of course, of course. Congratulations, Joe. You got So we're going to take a little bit of a break right now because we're going to... And to any of you watching this who were at Wittercoin with me this year, I just want to say a huge thank you for making this the absolute time of my life. This was an amazing experience. It was unforgettable. I learned so much, and I can't thank everybody enough who was involved. What are you doing? 
Nothing. He's just setting up at the coin show. Private Witter Coin Coin Show. Tyler, say hello to the Witter Coin video. This is your case. I like your Lincoln scent that you got going on. Those are some top pops. Thank you. How's it going? It's it's not a live stream, but we're doing a video for Witter Coin. Just showing around, you know, we got the private coin show. Those are expensive. Aren't those really expensive? Two thousand. No, I don't want to. I'm I'm blind as it is. Did you try it? Yeah. You did? Is it funny? And this is my case. I have my world coin binders here. I have some stuff up here that's not for sale uh, and stuff that is for sale, except for the Witter coin choice, you know, specimen slab. And then I just bought those two, sneak peek. So. Cooler from afar. It's red, it's a ripoff. Look at how thick that tree is. Sheesh, beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, rip! Absolutely destroyed right there. My dad's not that old. Is this the vlog? Am this I in the vlog? The vlog? The vlog? Oh. oh my gosh! Yo! yo, yo. yo. <laughs> it's a, it's a hole! It's a tree with a hole! Oh! oh. 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 <laughs> this is a little oh. silly. Really? <laughs> Like, I'm the city of Rangers. 
We got a woo. Woo! nerds in the forest. It's a silly sight. And then how are you going to get back up? <laughs> Come on back up, guys. You're too low. No, there's nothing down there but river. San Francisco airport, as you can see, we're leaving. We're coins, unfortunately, over. I'm here with Josh. How's it going? Do you have anything to say? Uh, it was a wonderful time. I like this guy a lot. He's great. Number six, and you should please, like and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you too. It's been a pleasure. Have a safe right. flight. Safe flights. Officially made it back home. As you can see, I had the time of my life. To everybody from Witter Coin who's watching this video, I just want to say a huge thank you. To Abby, to Seth, to the instructors, to the special guests who came and spoke. I learned so much, I had so much fun, I met so many cool people, made lifelong friends. Special shout out to Ben Brody, Kurt, Brendan, and Joe for letting me do interviews with them and also for helping me at the Witter Coin shop. And to any young numismatists watching this video, definitely consider applying next time it comes around. This was an unforgettable experience and I thank everybody again so much. But don't leave yet, I have one final interview with Seth Chandler himself. So thank you guys so much for joining. It was a really long vlog, but a really long and fun trip. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah. So I'm here with Seth Chandler. He's like he's the chancellor of Wittercoin University. What are you most proud of about Wittercoin University and coin dealing in general? Uh, definitely Wittercoin U is one of the things that I contribute to that I'm most proud of. It, it's it's I love to see all of y'all together, all the young members together, just having a great time. Because you're all ecstatic. You're all ecstatic to be around each other. So, yeah. Just, together you know having a good time because I know how tough it is to find uh, other students you know your same age that kind of live near yourself so to get everybody together is huge yeah. and do you have any final message for the viewers for any winter coin students watching absolutely the number one goal by far really the only goal of winter coin university is to inspire others to give back to the hobby in some form I mean that happen today tomorrow it could happen when you're an old man like me in your 50s Help out at your local coin club. You know, start a local coin club. Give a coin presentation at your school. Whatever it is, just give back to the hobby. So the same thing ain't free. I expect you to give back a lot to your hobby, all right? Over the course of years, that's the number one thing. So there you go. Thank you. Of course, man. All right.